Hello class, welcome to our 14th lecture series on managerial accounting and I'm your instructor Jamal Haider. So in our previous lecture we were talking about the profit planning and we talked about the budgeting stuff and we talked about the creation of the uh, different budgets. So in our master budget plan so we started from sales budget. From sales budget, we started the production budget. And from production budget, we calculated direct material, direct labor budget, and manufacturing overhead budget. And after that, <laughs> we finished ending inventory budgeting. So today, we'll talk about the selling and ad and administrative budget, the cash budget, the budgeted income statement, and budgeted balance sheet. So let's just talk about our today's learning objective. So our today's LOS learning objective statement is prepare a selling and administrative expense budget. So we'll be be continuing the same our Royal example. So at Royal. The selling and administrative expenses budget is divided into variable and fixed component. We just go through the information. So the variable selling and administrative expenses are 0 0.50 per unit sold. So my question is why you are given per unit variable cost? Why not the total variable cost? And here the fixed selling and administrative expenses are 70,000 per month. They are giving you this whole figure for fixed cost, but they are giving you variable cost per unit. Why is that? Because the behavior of the variable cost per unit is constant. You can rely the variable per unit cost, but you cannot rely the per unit fixed cost because behavior of fixed cost per unit changes. So that's why they're given you per unit variable cost and the whole figure or full cost of a total fixed cost of selling and administrative expenses. The fixed selling and administrative expenses include 10,000 in cost, which is primarily depreciation and there are not cash outflows of the current month. So let's prepare our selling and administrative budget. So we know that our budgeted sales are 20,000 for April, right? For May, we are already given the numbers here. So here, variable rate is 0.5. So our variable expense for April is 10,000. Our fixed expense is 70,000. And we less our known cash expense, why? because in selling and administrative expenses, if we are setting the budgets for cash expenses, it means this 70,000 is basically your hard cash expenses, which actually go out from your pocket. And if you don't include, you don't exclude the depreciation effect, it means this is not the cash effect. It includes some non-cash expenses. So that's why this is total selling and administrative expenses, 80,000. And if you, if you wanna add the cash selling and administrative expense, please, whenever you write the word cash, please do exclude do exclude non-cash transactions or non-cash expenses. So depreciation is our non-cash expense. So we just less it out. Otherwise, uh, until here, our selling and, 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 and administrative expense budget is complete, right? So calculate the selling and, and administrative expenses, expenses, cash expenses for the quarter. It means 
we would be deleting the 10,000 from May and June because we don't want its effect to be included in our final uh, selling and administrative expenses budgeting. So what are the total disbursements? So you just find out to 30,000 how? Because May budgeted sales are 50,000 and the payment of variable selling and administrative expenses are 0 0.5, which is 25,000. Fixed expenses are 70,000, excluding the effect of non-cash, so we have 85,000. So total quarter, 70,000 plus 85,000 plus 75,000 is 230,000, right? Now preparing a cash budget. So those who already studied the accounting from me, so they know that how we create the cash budget. So I'm not spending too much time on the explanation of cash budget. So but just remember that cash budget is, is in the cash budget, we talked about the uh, forecasted cash inflows which means cash collections and we exclude from cash collection the expected cash payments and then we find out that if we had some kind of deficit so where we need to fulfill that deficit if not if we have surplus then we have opportunity to invest that extra cash for some markup so this is all you know the uh, usage of the cash budget in order to know that in which particular month or quarter, whether we are having the cash dis disturbance or not, or liquidity disbursements or not. So the cash budget is divided into four sections. Number one is cash receipts. Number two, cash disbursement. Number three, excess cash. And then financing section detail, whether we need to borrow or whether we need to repay our projected uh, you know, payments or borrowings. So let's talk about this. So we have the following data regarding the same company Royal. So Royal maintains a 16% open line for credit of 75,000, which means they don't need to request from the bank that they need, uh, you know, loan. The bank can easily give them 75,000 dollar loan but for a markup of 16 percent for any payment less than or equal to 75,000 so they need they didn't need to request a loan of 75,000 dollar okay so they also maintain a minimum cash balance of 30,000 so no point of time or, or you can see that every month their balance must be 30,000 dollar borrows on the first day of the month and repay loans at the last day of the month so this is the policy to calculate the interest rate so they pay the cash dividend on april forty nine thousand dollars april cash disbursement is the dividend payment and the they purchases 143,700 of equipment in may and $48,300 in June. Both purchases are paid in cash. So that is also their, <coughs> sorry, purchases for May and June. And they has April one cash balance 40,000, right? So let's talk about this. So they're, Opening balance is 40,000. So cash collection from customer in April. So go back to our cash collection budget. You find out over there cash collection for the month of April is 170,000. So their total cash available is 210,000, right? So regarding the disbursement, so we have to pay for raw material, we have to pay for direct labor, we have to pay for manufacturing, overhead we have to pay for selling and, and administrative, and then we are planning to purchase an equipment and for dividend. 
for May and June, we are planning to purchase equipment. So in April, we don't have it. That's why we have a zero uh, here. So where this these figures coming from? 40,000 is coming from material, raw material budget. Direct labor, 15,000 coming from direct labor budget. Manufacturing overhead, 56,000 coming from manufacturing overhead budget. Selling expenses and administrative expenses, 70,000 is coming from the, the selling and, 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 and administrative expenses budget. So remember, that's why we excluded the effect of depreciation in our uh, selling and admin budget because we will be using that figure in our cash budget. So let me just uh, here. So in that budget, why don't we use 80,000? We can use that one, but since we are using all the budgets to make the cash budget, so that's why we need this final figure, which is based on cash. So let's just double check whether we have raw material uh, or directly figure is you see here the total direct labor cost for the month of April is 15,000 so let's double check that one in cash budget did we use the same amount yes we use the same amount right so all of you guys, where these figures are coming from, these figures are coming from your budgets and also some of the planned purchasing or planned payments, right? So your total disbursements, disbursement would be 230,000, right? And your deficiency is 20,000. And remember, in no time you need to maintain 30,000 balance. So you are negative 20,000. So how much you need to borrow? 50,000. So most of the students, they confuse why we need 50,000, right? Instead, we can have 20,000 loan to fill our deficiency. But remember, we need to maintain, the question explicitly mentioned that we need to maintain here. 30,000 dollar every month so that's why we need to borrow 50000 right so the four sections are section 1 cash collection second two second is the cash disbursement third one is your efficiency uh, of like sorry deficiency or excess and then fourth section is your borrowings whatsoever so do we need to pay interest no, because we borrowed, we will borrow on 1st of April, uh, on 1st of uh, May, and we will pay on 30th of May. So the ending balance should be 30,000 at the end of the month. Would We would be having a shot of 20,000. And at the end of April, we request, not we request, but since we have an open line of credit, automatically 50,000 will be credited to our account here so let's talk about the may balance so may so where this thirty thousand came from because the ending balance of april would be the opening balance for 